Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Sunday, January 12, 2020. Here's an update on the post reconstruction findings for our 1947 Chris Craft Cedar Plank U22. Generally, the news is, is good. She needs a cosmetic do over. Uh, we found a bunch of pop screws on the uh, hull sides. The uh, ceilings really need to come off so that we can strip paint and reinstall them. Uh, there's kind of a mixture of fasteners and it'd really be kind of nice if the fasteners were brighter than they are now after all these years. Um, the bilge, it, the motor mounts, and all of that are also in quite nice shape. Uh, what is pleasing, and I must say unusual to find, is that this boat's Chrysler Crown, which is original to the boat by hull number, has never really dripped oil into the bilge. I mean, we normally we're down in here scraping layers and layers, an eighth of an inch, three eighths of an inch of old grease and old oil out of a bilge. Uh, this bilge is quite clean. The stringers are in great shape. The framing under the foredeck, really superb, just superb. The dash has never been messed around with. It is original and really quite nice. The challenge with uh, these crisscrafts, uh, with the what I call the racing stripe dashboards, is that those are stainless strips that have been forced in. They're actually uh, channels in the shape of a U in the cross section. So removing them without damage them, damaging them is uh, quite a trick. And if any of you in the community have your secret sauce for removing these racing stripes, so that they can be reinstalled post uh, preservation. We'd love to hear it. So that's the good news. And if you remember, this poor U-22 found a pile of stone and rocks. And from what we tell, she was moving along at a pretty good clip. So let's take a look at this in some detail if only to uh, caution all of us that if the surface level of the body of water upon which we typically boat has dropped significantly, uh, go through your normal channel. I would even suggest you go through in a little outboard with a portable sounder so that you can appreciate what a foot or two feet of surface level decline threaten in the way of uh, a serious crash. This was a serious, serious crash. The entire uh, drive line was simply destroyed. I mean, I, there's no nicer way to say it. The, the prop shaft log uh, is untouched, unhurt. That's the only thing. Here, let's take a look and so that you can appreciate what I'm saying. Yeah, take a look at that. So far, we've been able to release the prop, the strut, the prop shaft, the rudder, and the uh, prop shaft shaft log. We have not been able to release the rudder shaft log and uh, we'll show you when we look at it up close and personal in a minute. Um, the rudder doesn't look too bad. Well, how about when you take a look at it at several angles? It is bent back 
it's bent this way, and it's frac the, the casting is fractured right here. So fortunately, I've been able to find a period rudder. I've been able to find a U-22 prop. I've been able to find a stainless steel prop shaft. Everybody should know that these original uh, brass, or brass prop shafts were only designed to run for about 10 years, 15 at the outside. This boat is in 1947. Uh, of course I can't tell, be absolutely certain, but that prop shaft looks all the world like an original prop shaft. My real challenge has been the strut. It is cast bronze. No, it cannot be straightened. No way would you want, at least what I want, my boat to have my prop shaft and my prop running through it. It is simply destroyed. So fortunately working with Robert Henkel, Chris Craft Parts in Marine City, Michigan, uh, we have found uh, that his foundry has the proper mold for the U-22 strut. You can't just put any strut on this boat because this particular boat has a, a rock guard. Well, it attempted to guard the prop but and got badly beaten. It looks like this probably got hit from here because the strut, which should be way over here, is, is bent towards me. This prop shaft is bent this way right here, and then it swoops up just as it exits the strut and also is pushed in the other direction. So I think the initial hit was here, but then the prop, I can't, I can't move it. Um, and then there's one other item that we, we haven't been able to sort out yet, and I'd love to hear your ideas. Remember, a, a minute or so ago, I commented happily on the dry, largely grease and oil residue uh, filled bilge. Well, here's the problem. That engine, until this happened at least, was not a leaker. But this exhaust pipe, this is where it comes out of the, the engine, this exhaust pipe has a strong layer, strong, more than a sheen of fresh motor oil running the full length. It came out here and worked its way down. Uh, I can't tell whether the, the dirty grease that's on it is from a long time ago, but it's really intriguing that the, the inside of the boat, the, the bilge in this area, right ahead of the transom, is all nice and dry. It's just old uh, Chris Craft bilge paint in there, what you would expect to find. Yet, this exhaust pipe, which is in the boat, in this attitude, has got a fresh film of oil all the way down to about here where it rises to exit the transom. So, uh, we also discovered in taking a look at the engine that until we were able to free it, the transmission was locked. And uh, let, let me go back and pick that up again. So this exhaust pipe sits in the boat in this attitude, connects to the great big fitting that comes off the engine, and we find it suspicious that there's fresh oil all the way down and 
all the way along to about here, right about to where it goes back up to exit the transom. Uh, the engine's an unknown entity so far. Uh, when we pulled it from the, from the uh, hull, we tried to test whether or not we could shift it or turn it. We could do neither. It was absolutely, absolutely locked. Um, the engine just looks like a, a pretty standard, old, uh, very original Chrysler Crown. And I know the owners have not had, it has not given the owners much trouble other than it's six volts right now. And of course we all know those of us who've insisted that we'll stay with our original six volt system that a six volt system doesn't spin the engine very quickly and it can, the engine can become cranky. Um, but the transmission was absolutely locked. Uh, we worked, we pulled the, the cover off, you know, sort of did the shade tree thing of rattle this, rattle that, don't put a lot of pressure on it, and it finally released. The engine will, will turn over. We've only done it by hand. So our next step with the engine before making recommendations to the boat's owners is to do a, uh, a compression test followed by a leak down test. Uh, I'm just, if you, if you go back and, and visualize that prop and that strut and that prop shaft and in a minute see what happened to the rudder shaft log in this uh, disaster, uh, you've got to ask yourself, this engine went from what? 2,000 RPMs, 2,500 RPMs, even 1,800 RPMs to zip very, very quickly. Not absolutely instantaneously because two blades of the prop were totally destroyed. So it managed to spin a little bit, but you think about it, the engine was still trying to spin that prop shaft. It was still running. It was in gear and the rocks were keeping the prop shaft from spinning. Um, our concern is that, that something broke way down deep in the engine. Uh, I, I'm not looking at, for a cracked head, I'm looking for uh, bearing issues, uh, rod issues. Uh, we'll know more once we, do, once we do the compression and leak down test. Now let's set the camera up inside the bilge, aiming at the transom so that you can see what the rocks did to the wood. So this exhaust pipe sits in the boat in this attitude, connects to the great big fitting that comes off the engine, and we find it suspicious that there's fresh oil all the way down and all the way along to about here, right about to where it goes back up to exit the transom. Uh, the engine's an unknown entity so far. Uh, when we pulled it from the, from the uh, hull, we tried to test whether or not we could shift it or turn it. We could do neither. It was absolutely, absolutely locked. Um, the engine just looks like a, a pretty standard, old, uh, very original Chrysler Crown. And I know the owners have not had, it has not given the owners much trouble other than it's six volts right now and of course we all know those of us who've insisted that we'll stay with our original six volt system that a six volt system doesn't spin the engine very quickly and it can the engine can become cranky um, but 
the transmission was absolutely locked. Uh, we worked, we pulled the, the cover off, you know, sort of did the shade tree thing of rattle this, rattle that, don't put a lot of pressure on it, and it finally released. The engine will, will turn over. We've only done it by hand. So our next step with the engine before making recommendations to the boat's owners is to do a, uh, a compression test followed by a leak down test. Uh, I'm just, if you, if you go back and, and visualize that prop and that strut and that prop shaft and in a minute see what happened to the rudder shaft log in this uh, disaster, uh, you've got to ask yourself, this engine went from what? 2,000 RPMs, 2,500 RPMs, even 1,800 RPMs to zip very, very quickly. Not absolutely instantaneously because two blades of the prop were totally destroyed. So it managed to spin a little bit, but you think about it, the engine was still trying to spin that prop shaft. It was still running. It was in gear and the rocks were keeping the prop shaft from spinning. Um, our concern is that, that something broke way down deep in the engine. Uh, I, I'm not looking at, for a cracked head, I'm looking for uh, bearing issues, uh, rod issues. Uh, we'll know more once we, do, once we do the compression and leak down test. Now let's set the camera up inside the bilge, aiming at the transom so that you can see what the rocks did to the wood. Well, let's start with the uh, the transom and the rudder shaft log. As you can see, and this explain, I mean, there was just incredible pressure on the rudder shaft that comes up through the log and through that uh, fitting. And as soon as we were able to drive the rudder shaft down far enough to clear that fitting on the top, we witnessed a boom. And that piece of wood broke the rest of the way away and the fitting pivoted abruptly to port. The unfortunate thing is it broke that main vertical transom frame in the process. We can't sister that. We have to replace that because it's broken there. It is broken uh, behind the right where the lifting rod comes down and and fits in and attaches and the shaft log itself is sitting at an angle. Why? Well, let's keep tipping this puppy down. So we've got little tough for a big guy to move around in a build. Um, we've got this fitting totally out of place. It's gone way over that way. Uh, we cannot get to the two bolts that are holding it on. Uh, this frame is broken out all across the bottom. It's broken out up where the lifting rod attaches to the lifting rod frame. The rudder log, which is right here, is sitting at an angle towards port. Um, the keel, well, sadly, it's not just the keel. Would that it were just the keel. This is the main frame, the last main frame Right? And this one it is really critical 
because the prop has passed down and the shaft block, the strut attaches right here. So this, this frame, as well as the one ahead of it, this frame, okay. my camera's not being my friend today. My tripod's not being my friend. Sorry. There. This frame is snapped. This is a this is two pieces. Um, but we got underneath and this has has been uh, dislodged actually forward a bit. Um, but you can see this is the keelson right here. It is it is just gone. The, this mounting plate which runs beneath the stringer on both sides. This mounting plate is totally snapped through and through. Uh, it in fact was uh, pretty rotten. And I don't I don't understand that. You wouldn't think because uh, there's really no signs of there being lots of moisture back here but yeah, that this this plank is just not in great shape, but it would have been fine if we didn't have the crash back there that pushed everything forward and pivoted it. If you can think uh, down and towards the bow, so if you looked at it sideways from starboard, climbed underneath and looked at it from starboard, uh, let's say the starboard chine you would see that everything is tipped forward of vertical and then I can't remember I think towards port so this keelson has to be replaced the keel beneath it on the outside of the boat is broken through and through in about two places maybe three we won't know until we get it apart um, so we'll have to replace the strut mounting block, the keelson up to at probably the boat's the, the bottom's quite flat here. It's not getting a lot of up and down pressure and banging. Most of that is further up in the hull uh, beneath the engine as the boat rides through the water. So we will probably do a sister just aft of the um, prop shaft and double it up so that it is extra strong. This frame unfortunately runs all the way to the chine on both sides. So the only way to get to this one and to the next one forward and of course to the keelson is uh, to flip the boat over and start removing the bottom. And since the bottom planks run north and south from transom to bow, um, that means we'll, we will be forced to remove almost all of the planking, at least from chine to chine here, because the inner planking, remember, the inner planking runs runs at an angle relative to the sides of the boat so removing these means uh, uh, excuse me removing the planks themselves the exterior planks means that these guys have to come off too they run diagonally uh, we will go only as far forward as absolutely necessary but I'm guessing let's say I'll be surprised if we don't have to remove 40% uh, of the bottom planking and that would be on a good day. So this is where we are today. The damage is extreme and extensive. Um, the running gear replacement parts, it looks uh, like uh, her owner's going to have a pretty significant expense. Um, just for the parts themselves and then we have to do of course all of this structural work 
at the same time to render the boat sound for them again. We will be communicating with them and with you, of course, as we make progress. But for now, this is today's update on the 1947 Chris Craft U-22 Cedar Plank Hull. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks.